morning and welcome back to Y254 in the morning. My name is Faith Msoli and just in case you're joining us, it's WCW. On this segment, we celebrate the strength of a woman. Now, I'm sure you've come across uh, people living with disability on the streets and all you felt for them was sympathy. To an extent, they even dropped a coin or two in their teens. But come to think of it, this is not all that uh, these people need. They also have needs. They need uh, better education, better jobs, better, better housing. And uh, you find that most of them end up on the streets. Now, today in studio, we are speaking to Patricia Mativo. She is a youth leader and an advocate for people living with a disability. She wears so many hats and she's here to talk on this and more. Engage us on all our social media platforms at Y254 channel at Faith Msoli. The hashtag is Y in the morning. Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Wow, you look so young, but you wear so many hats. Um, I'm grateful to God. Wow. Yes. So who is Patricia Mativo? Um, Patricia Mativo uh, first is a graduate from Multimedia University of Kenya mm -hmm. with a bachelor's degree in analytical chemistry, mm -hmm. first class honors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a former brand ambassador for Riziki Source, an organization that uh, deals with uh, facilitating em employment for persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I've, ha I've had uh, various leadership positions where currently I'm the vice chair of the UNFPA, mm -hmm. that is the United uh, Nations Populations Fund Youth Advisory Panel. Uh, I'm the vice chair. Mm -hmm. And um, I work with uh, other organizations such as Inwadada, uh, Tausi Task Force. Mm -hmm. All of these uh, organizations basically uh, spearhead uh, the rights of humans, mostly sexual reproductive health rights. Wow. Yeah. So how was life growing up, it being that uh, you live with a disability and uh, there is this stereotype that people usually have towards people living with disability. Unapata mama anambiwa weo umeza kilema. It's a curse, like it's a curse in the society. How was it growing up with a disability? Okay, um, first for me, my disability was through a road accident mm -hmm. uh, in 2012. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, from 2012 to now, it's almost close to nine years, mm -hmm. going to ten. Of course, it has not been easy. Yeah, there's that uh, stereotype, there's that stigma. Well, uh, it has not been easy, and I believe it's not easy for most persons with disabilities because when it comes to getting opportunities, mm -hmm. most of us are considered less because they think we have no cap capabilities. When it comes to things, they just feel like these people... Um, they will take too much of our time, they need yeah. so much, so why should we have them? Yeah. But for me, I really tried to change the narrative when uh, I went back to school. So after the accident, I stayed mm -hmm. home for like two years mm -hmm. to heal from the accident, the trauma, understanding who the new Patricia was. So when I went back to school, of course, there's that when I would walk to a place, students would just stop and look at you. Of course, it would make me very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Then some teachers would... Uh, wonder if I'll still manage it because I stayed home for two years so some of them they couldn't even hold it but tell me are you sure you'll make it like for me it was really heartbreaking because as a teacher she tell me you know you're capable of this you're capable of many things but for them they to they were like trying to tell me that uh it's like close to impossible that you've come back to school mm -hmm. but I tried changing that narrative so I sat down I told myself I'll try to give these people something else to see from me, apart from my disability, because that's what they see from me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will just try to change everything that they think that I'm not capable of. Mm -hmm. So by then, I decided to focus more on my academics when I went to school. Mm -hmm. Then there's this time when uh, school elections came. I was like, why not? Why, should I, why shouldn't I try? Yeah. That's something that people are like, what? Mm -hmm. uh, did somebody push you to do that? I'm like, wow. no, this is something that I want. Yeah. What would you think? It's somebody who has pushed me. I mean, will they benefit from this? I mean, it's my thing. Yeah. So I went for the elections and I, I won. Mm -hmm. uh, Secretary, health uh, and uh, sanitation. Wow. That means I forgot to say that I'm also a mental health advocate mm -hmm. and I'm an, envir an environmentalist. Wow. So, yeah, and um, when I did my first exams after two years, I mm -hmm. was number 20. Then by the time I was completing my uh, KCSC in high school, mm -hmm. I tied with index one and uh, yeah, it was a B plane of 66 points. Mm -hmm. To me, that was something great mm -hmm. because having stayed home for two years mm -hmm. and still managed to do that, yeah. it was really <coughs> nice. 
Wow. So, yeah. And so uh, speaking of you running for a seat uh, in, the, in the campus and then now emerging and being a leader, uh, what stood out for you? Because there is this uh, stereotype here, she can't just do it for us. And you find that most people living with a the disability, they hold back and say, no, I can't, I can't just do it. What stood out for you? Well, I'm that kind of person first who does not listen to what people say. Mm -hmm. I'm the type to tell myself, if this is possible, it's possible. If it's not possible, then I think I should be the one saying it, but not somebody else to tell me. Mm -hmm. So with campus politics, I started off as a delegate, mm -hmm. of which again, I was the one with the highest votes in our faculty. Mm -hmm. And after that, now I ran for the seat, uh, Secretary of Special Needs, Health and Environment. Mm -hmm. At first, people really thought they couldn't, they, they had some issues like, will she manage it? Like, how will she do it? Because clearly herself, she needs help. Yeah. But for me, I knew what I am supposed to do. Mm -hmm. I know as a leader, I'm supposed to be there for my people. Mm -hmm. Mostly persons with disabilities, these are, these are the most neglected people. So I knew what uh, our group wanted. Mm -hmm. So clearly, when I knew when I was to get to power, this is what we wanted. And that's what I ensured when I got to power. Mm -hmm. I ensured that um, accessibility was the first thing that the school considered. Because when I joined the school, the school had zero accessibility for persons with dis disabilities. Mm -hmm. Like there were no ramps. Mm -hmm. Then now uh, we used to use common washrooms. But mm -hmm. when I got into power, I ensured that they had renovated some washrooms for us mm -hmm. and put special rooms for us on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Because initially it was like... Fight for yourself. If you get a room, you don't get a room. Mm -hmm. But you see, I tried to show, them, to show them that it's possible. Then again, uh, my docket was special needs, health and environment. So now for the health of the, and the environment, that means I'm including the whole university. I've done several campaigns on matters of the health and matters of uh, environment. Of uh, We have done a lot of degrading in the school, thanks to me. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. And we've done most uh, awareness of HIV awareness because... We believe have, uh, living in a society where HIV, we have zero HIV, new infections mm -hmm. could lead to prosperity, you know, uh, bring in income, bring in good standards of living. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I spearhead on these matters of the environment, uh, health. Uh, on that side, also, I was uh, the vice chair of the Health and Environment Club. So it made my work really easy. And with time, people are like, wow, uh, we really needed a leader like you. Wow. Yeah, with 10 people really appreciated me and they just couldn't help it. So I ended up going for two turns. Wow. Yeah. And so speaking for, speaking, uh, like people needed a leader like you. Yeah. There is a lady who was here last week. We hosted her here. And uh, she was saying that there is a time she went for a job interview. And then along the way, she just realized that the employer saw her as a liability and even dropped her out because she's living with a disability. And there is somewhere that you mentioned that you fight for people, employment for people living with a disability. Yeah. How are we trying, how, or rather, how are you trying to uh, sensitize the community to know that people living with disability are still able to do what a normal human beings can do. Yeah, actually, I don't know why they think persons with disabilities is just a different cluster, mm -hmm. but we are the same because at the end of the day, it's the brain that is used. Mm -hmm. So a person, with dis a person with a disability can reason the same way you without a disability can reason. Yeah. If it comes to uh, doing work, they can do the same way you can do. Mm -hmm. But it just needs the skills. So long as they have the skills, then why should you try to say this person? I don't think this person qualifies because of their physical disability. And disability does not mean inability. Yeah. I mean, obviously, for the past years, I've really proved that disability is not inability. True. Yeah, I have really tried my best to outdo myself and mm -hmm. prove that disability is not inability. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, when I was in high school, I said one of the things w that I was trying to prove people is uh, to give them something else to look at me other than my disability. Mm -hmm. So uh, say if I was to walk in in my, uh, in my campus, my former campus, just ask who Patricia is. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, some, uh, most of them will include the disability part later, later. Yeah. But they'll tell you of what kind of a leader it was, mm -hmm. uh, how good my grades were. I was just, I think I was a major source of inspiration to most students. Wow. Yeah, and uh, so for Rizike Source, uh, mm -hmm. what we do is we try to link up persons with disabilities to uh, employers. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is just they submit their... Uh, their CVs to mm -hmm. the website or the Riziki app. Mm -hmm. Then from there, when uh, employers seek for uh, 
uh, uh, employees with disabilities or when they just need some an employee, mm -hmm. uh, Riziki Source is able to match up the CV and uh, the job that's in line. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think uh, it's a lot that in your organization you have at least uh, somebody with a disability. Mm -hmm. It's inclusivity. And mm -hmm. our government is trying hard to ensure that there's inclusive inclusivity in all sectors. Wow, I was just yeah. coming there. Like, as a person living with disability, do you feel represented? in our government? Okay. Um, like, do you feel like your needs are being taken care of? Okay, I think they are trying. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, matters of disability, just the same case as mental health, mm -hmm. these are the things that uh, I raised very recently that people sat and, uh, and they're like, okay, these things are the most neglected. So it's time we come up with policies and ways and ensuring that uh, they're taken care of. So uh, for matters of disability, I think uh, they are trying. They are mm -hmm. trying. They're not doing their very best, but I think they are trying. Mm -hmm. And that's why people like me have to be there to remind them of what they're supposed to do. People mm -hmm. like me have to do what's supposed to be done. We don't have to wait for the government to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to say that most of the things that the government do is after seeing that the community is trying to do them, that mm -hmm. the young people are trying to do them, then that's where they're like, oh, also we have to do this also. Yeah, that's very sad, but I think they are trying, but they really have to try very hard Wow. to ensure that we are very much represented. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, being disabled later in life, you know, there is someone who is born with disability and therefore she or he grows knowing that this is who I am. Yeah. But being disabled along the way, like 20 years, 18 years, it's not easy to an extent that some people go into a mental crisis. Did you ever reach there? Of course, of course. <laughs> I went to a mental crisis to a point where I was like, Mom, natakasumu, mm -hmm. I need poison. Yeah, well, I just need I'll to die sorry. because, yeah, I don't see any value for myself. Like, I don't see if I can contribute anything to this life anymore. Mm -hmm. So just get me poison. I actually fell into depression. Wow. That's why I even stayed home for two years because it was really traumatizing. Mm -hmm. But with time, I learned that I'm the master of my own life. Mm -hmm. As much as people be like, um, don't worry, you'll get well soon, it's, it's going to be okay. But they're just there to say words for you to hear. Yeah. But now, what exactly will happen? Yeah, exactly. The reality. Yes. So again, it, it was my... Uh, step my take to make the first step that this is what I want. Mm -hmm. I have to forget that this happened now it's just moving forward because now that poison was not available according to my parents. Yeah. So I just have I just had to sit down and ensure that I proceed with life and uh, try to do my best and uh, try to also inspire people through my story. Wow. Yeah. Talking of inspiring people through your story, what would you tell someone who is living with a disability and is mentally retarded? Or rather, um, mentally disturbed. Mentally disturbed. Yes. Well, it's actually okay to be disturbed because mm -hmm. it's not easy given the discrimination our society is giving most of us. Mm -hmm. It's very normal. But again, at the end of the day, just like I did, mm -hmm. it's your life. So mm -hmm. if you'd want the society to control you, then uh, that's a done deal. But mm -hmm. it's you to control the society. It's mm -hmm. you to control your own life. It's you to show us what you have. Because I believe every human, every human, they have something great, something unique that they have to give to the society, mm -hmm. something to inspire the society. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own skills. Mm -hmm. Maybe it takes time for people to realize, but so long as you do anything from your heart and you love doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. trust me, there's somebody somewhere is being inspired by what you're doing. Oh. Yeah, so it just, you just have to be yourself. Mm -hmm. Do what you do. Don't have to, you don't have to listen to what people are saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, there's somewhere you mentioned that you also deal with reproductive yeah. health. And so there is a time when uh, the government was proposing for introduction of uh, uh, teaching in regards to reproductive health. Yeah, um, sexual and reproductive health mm -hmm. is a very sensitive topic. And I believe that uh, if we're able to educate uh, our younger generation as early as possible, like mm -hmm. before they even get to the point where they can actually uh, uh, be affected by their decisions, then mm -hmm. uh, the better. We have to educate this young community that even if they have to start using these protective measures as early as in a primary school, for me, I'm actually very much with it. I'm very much okay with it because you're trying to protect this young person's life. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. they they are not ready for responsibilities mm -hmm. they're not ready to take care of sexual uh, diseases mm -hmm. so if you're able to educate them that you as a young person yes you're going through through these changes mm -hmm. and this is how you should do you can either abstain but if you feel like you can't abstain then why not use a condom but, but someone but someone <laughs> was arguing like it is so early like they are so young so it's like you're giving them information information is key <laughs> so giving them information is actually correct it's information right. okay information that is not good information no, to them at no, that tender age no, no so you see when we decide to withhold this information mm -hmm. they'll start picking from uh, other places just bits by bits and it will be very incomplete information mm -hmm. and this is what will lead to uh, pregnancies abortions because people will be like you know when you have sex and you go to pee you will not have preg you'll, you'll not be pregnant, pregnant yeah. that's you see i'm a pick through other places small small bits so point two i may come up now a very wrong information yes. but if you're able to just sit calmly and start talking to them that this is what you should do and these are the repercussions mm -hmm. yes a young person should know you're supposed to do this this and this and this but if by any chance you feel like you cannot do this then these are the choices that you have mm -hmm. and i feel like even parents should be among the people who talk to their children first even before us come and start telling the youth that oh you know this is what you should do i think your parents is not telling you this but if parents are confident enough to tell them then i think actually it's their right to get this information as early as like your adogo mm -hmm. as early as when they are young mm -hmm. that way you can you can be able to ensure that this young person is able to live a fulfilled life once somebody has full information then mm. they are they are they are good to have to uh, have a fulfilled life, to, wa to how they think their life should be. Mm -hmm. Fulfilled, living to their best of their capability. So information is very key. It doesn't matter what kind of age they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no matter the age, no matter the age. information is key yeah. and it will help them. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, then also mm -hmm. another thing is, uh, when it comes to sexual reproductive health rights, now that we're approaching to um, uh, 6th of February, that's uh, International Day for FGM. Mm -hmm. So again, uh, this kind of information like uh, practices of FGM, uh, gender-based violence, how they should uh, react to them. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is information that our younger generation really needs to have it because they are our future leaders. Yeah. They are the ones to start telling these people that I will not agree to being uh, uh, cut my clitoris or I'll not agree to you as my dad just uh, sleeping with me. You know, we have... Uh, um, we have parents who actually molest their children. Yes, we have uncles who molest their children. Mm -hmm. So again, having this information about sexual and reproductive health rights, mm -hmm. as early as now, these people know that if this is what happens to me, then I can actually go to this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. Wow. And so you are an env environmentalist. Yes. I remember way back in campus, there is this lady who was so passionate about the environment. To an extent that if you dropped uh, a paper somewhere, yeah, chewing gum. He'd be like, "Excuse me, Faith, can you pick that?" Yeah. <laughs> I am exactly <laughs> like that. I'm exactly like that. And I will tell you, the last time I did that was just before my graduation. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in the car. Then uh, some girls uh were walking by. They passed me, and uh, one of them was drinking water, and another one was drinking juice. Mm -hmm. So one finished just drinking the juice and just through it yeah and they didn't have like any hesitation like look around and, and sometimes drop. and sometimes they drop like those bottles in a very clean and very clean environment spotless spotless and to them it's something very normal yeah like it's somebody's mentality that it's actually very normal somebody will come and pick it here they'll clean it. somebody's employed yeah but why would you wait for somebody to come and pick your own trash mm -hmm. so what i did was i actually hooted so when i hooted of course they're like What's happening? Mm -hmm. I was like, excuse me, you girl, you with the white top, pick what I've just dropped. And you see, because I put it, <laughs> now everyone was getting the attention. Yeah. Everyone was looking, so she had no any other option but to just pick and go. Wow. Because honestly, I was, I was going to continue the fight. She was not going to pick it. Mm -hmm. I am that kind of person. If you just throw th something, I don't care if, if you're my friend, I'll be like, why the hell have you done that? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can just pick it and go drop it in the dustbin. Yeah. Wow environment is something that really need to protect mm -hmm. uh, global warming is something that's real yeah. yesterday somebody was telling me don't you think maybe this something about global warming is maybe it's a calendar that has been shaken mm -hmm. i mean we're not going through the same calendar yeah like, and 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 even <laughs> missing rains in january i was exactly. like this is global warming yeah. because for me i'm used to like 
jua throughout January. Yeah, exactly. So when that person said, actually, it was my first time interacting with those people. In fact, I was not even speaking a lot because I didn't know the people who I was with. So mm -hmm. when I was just on my phone, when they said that, mm -hmm. I was like, no. It's just humans. Mm -hmm. It's this all things that's happening. It's global warming, and mm -hmm. it's because humans are not being responsible enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he, I, I was ready to take up that conversation because I felt like this person also, was also lacking some information when it comes to matters of protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. Then he was like saying, um, "Well, we thank God now it's raining here because we were not expecting rains." But I'm like, "Yeah, probably we have rains here, but don't you think that maybe some place right now they're lacking the rain?" Yeah. Yeah, so global warming is something that's real and we are responsible for it. True. Very responsible. So if we as humans can change our actions and be responsible enough, uh, ensure that we have sustainable systems, ensure that we have ways of um, managing our waste, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. reducing waste, mm -hmm. then uh, I think uh, it's something that every person should do. And even children should also have this information, wow. not just sexual information. I'm also for the idea that children should also be ambassadors for environment. Wow. Yeah. And so uh, uh, you are a fighter. You have overcome the disability oh, yes. and uh, you, you, you are an epitome of you can do it whether disabled or not or normal. Yeah. Uh, but I guess there are some challenges that you go through on a daily basis. So what are some of the challenges that you face on a daily basis? Yes, of course. Yeah. As much as I try to uh, do myself uh, mm -hmm. with my disability, of course there are those challenges that are uh, there once in a while. Mm -hmm. But uh, for me, I, uh, I think they're very much minimal. I really try to, uh, to avoid them. But most of the times, maybe... I'll just maybe if I have nothing to do, say um, uh, I'm not so occupied that day mm -hmm. and uh, maybe I'm on my phone, then suddenly I'll just sit and I'll start thinking, oh my God, right now I've, I would have been doing this because before my accident, I used to have um, hobbies. I used yeah. to like modeling. I used mm -hmm. to like dancing. Wow. Then for, yeah, <laughs> yeah, then at times when I see such kind of videos, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. this would have been me, but... Uh, Anyway, let me brush that off. Let me brush that off. I believe yeah. that God had something else planned for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, my challenges are very much minimal. Mm -hmm. But again, when uh, at times when I go for services out there, we have people who have knowledge enough that persons with disabilities have the priority. Not because that they are weak or anything, but it's because of their situation. Mm -hmm. They can't stand long enough in a line. Mm -hmm. They cannot just, you know, you need to give them priority. Like when they're coming and there's a queue, you just have to skip them because... They, they can't sustain themselves to stay there for that long enough. Mm -hmm. So at some organizations, we meet very nice people who will be like, um, just come, just come, sit here. What do you want to do? I, I can help you, mm -hmm. which is quite okay. Mm -hmm. But there are some people who will be like, no, you just wait. I mean, this land has been there for long. Mm -hmm. And you'd wonder, wait, hold on. Yeah. Do, you, do you watch the news? Do you know what's happening actually? Yeah. But let's put aside what's happening. Mm -hmm. What are your values? Don't yeah. you have like sympathy for what's happening here? Like, um, don't you think this person deserves to go first and go uh, and get, uh, get their, their help and, uh, and leave instead of just putting them there on the line? Like, for example, me, I can't stand on the line for long. Of mm -hmm. course, I'll get tired. Yeah. I believe you as a normal human, you, you will think automatically this person will get tired. That you, you think that you don't have to drop down like faint before yeah, exactly. you take action. Yeah, exactly. You meet <laughs> some of us also have some other underlying health conditions. Yes. So putting us there now will will compl complicate us mm -hmm. exactly example now people with epilepsy mm -hmm. for example but whether this is a kind of disability that uh that you cannot see it unless somebody discloses it to you yes and it's something that happens from nowhere yeah so these are kind of people also who really need much care and attention mm -hmm. because again when it happens these people can easily hurt themselves mm -hmm. yeah so uh i think uh everyone should be an ambassador in uh, matters of uh bringing change for persons with disabilities, not just us because we're the ones who are affected. Mm -hmm. But I believe any normal human has just that knowledge that a person with disability can, uh, this is what they need, this is what we need to provide for them. Mm -hmm. If it's employment, they also have the same equal rights. We don't have to be like, um, you know, they will waste time. But I think when it comes to social matters, we are all equal. They should, sure. they should actually remember that we're all equal. Mm -hmm. We're all equal. But now when it comes to such services, of course, you have to think wisely that they need to 
go first online. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that you're an ambassador of people living with disability, uh, talk to someone who thinks that all uh, people living with disability need is sympathy. Like you drop that coin, I'm walking along the street, I drop that coin in that tin, and then tomorrow I pass by, I have sympathized with you today, I've yeah. dropped that coin. Tomorrow when I pass by, I'm like, Ujama nafanya nini hapa na jana nilimwekea pesa. So, yeah. you see, talk to that person who thinks that sympathy is the only thing that people living with disability need. No, sympathy is not the only thing that persons with disabilities need. Mm -hmm. So, this saying that... Um, you, you you show somebody how to fish but 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 not just giving them the fish mm -hmm. like giving them the coin today then tomorrow again coin but if you show them how to get that coin then that would be the best way mm -hmm. so if you are in a position where you know you know you can mentor this person mentor them show them that this is not the only way besides i've heard of many other people like you who have done so many great things so i believe there's something still more that you can do than just sitting here down and uh, asking for coins. Mm -hmm. Like, inspire them, let them know, because most of them are not even educated. And uh, if you as a person can have that chance to talk to them and explain to them that, you know, you can do much great things. Today I'm not giving you a coin. Today I'm telling you this is what you're supposed to do. There are many works by the government. You can also become, you can also start your own work. There are many, there is a lot of things to do. As much as you, you'll get little and you'll strain a lot, but at least you'll have some, some place to start. And uh, speaking about education, mm -hmm. uh, I want to launch my foundation where it will actually help uh, persons with disabilities get access to education. Wow. Because I feel like um, uh, most of them have lacked uh, education. Mm -hmm. Educa and education is one of the stats. It's like a guide to, uh, to many other things. Because yeah. uh, w I went through education. Because if I sit back and... Uh, Say, if I never went back to school after the accident, I really don't know where I could be right now. Mm -hmm. But you see, when I went back to school, forget about the academic part, the other part where now I started, I got to know that I'm a good leader. I started becoming an ambassador mm -hmm. because you interact with people with different values, with different mentality. Mm -hmm. So I think education is one of the ways where it exposes people to many things. Mm -hmm. So again, if persons with disabilities can be exposed to education, then I think it would be a very good start for them. And that's why I want to start my own foundation where I'm able to uh, take them close to education and show them the importance of education and give them easy access to education. Wow. Yeah. And so we've come to an end of the show. But before that, I want you as your parting shot to talk to this parent who has given birth to a child with any form of disability or someone who has gotten a, a road accident or someone whichever way disabled and he feels like his disability is an in inability okay uh -huh. well for that point who just got that child of course i know it will be heartbreaking but again having a child is a blessing mm -hmm. and every child has their own um they, 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 they are unique on their own way mm -hmm. you just have to let them go to the outside world let them explore whatever uh, opportunities come their way because you never know what this where these people will uh, or, or how these people will become eventually all you have to do is let them go to the world mm -hmm. don't be scared to let them to go outside of the world and explore opportunities of course the world is harsh out there for persons with disabilities but just let them go let them go and let them grow because having them to be exposed to all these harsh whatever is harsh uh, conditions um, that's how they get to know that oh this is how it is to be and this is how I should defend myself you should just let them go. Mm -hmm. By having them there at home, then it won't bring any value to you or to them. And also, mm -hmm. um, uh, one of the greatest scientists, Stephen Hawking, mm -hmm. is one of the greatest and latest scientists. Mm -hmm. Stephen Hawking um, was a scientist with a disability. And uh, for him, it came by with time. It's not like he was born with a disability. Mm -hmm. And still with his disability, he was able to, to do what most scientists uh, did. He's, uh, he's just one of the best scientists. When you Google Stephen Hawking, his name is just close to where Isaac Newton is. And he's one of the latest and the best scientists. Mm -hmm. So disability definitely is not inability. Mm -hmm. These people have many things to do, mm -hmm. many great things to show. They have potential. They have a lot that they can inspire people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we have a lot that would have wished we had more time to talk about, but we can always have you back. Yeah, sure. Wow. Thank you.
Wow, what an inspiration story from Patricia. And they say that the dance of a madman, it's just interesting to you when he or she is not your family member. Be nice to people, uh, be kind, it costs you nothing. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Faith Msoli. Kayesu is up next with Girl Stock. Stay right here.